All right, um, welcome everyone who has just joined us to this masterclass by our master teacher for this year's Celia Mendes Young Pianist Beethoven competition. I'm absolutely delighted to introduce Stuart Goodyear, uh, who is joining us from Pennsylvania. Um, so proclaimed as a phenomenon by the Los Angeles Times and one of the best pianists of a generation by the Philadelphia Inquirer, Stuart Goodyear is an accomplished young pianist as a concert concerto soloist, chamber musician, recitalist, and composer. Mr. Goodyear has performed with major orchestras of the world, including the Philadelphia Orchestra, New York Philharmonic, Chicago Symphony, Pittsburgh Symphony, San Francisco Symphony, Los Angeles Philharmonic, Cleveland Orchestra, and many others. He's a Beethoven specialist. Um, his discography includes Beethoven's complete piano sonatas, which received a Juno nomination for best classical recording and the Diabelli variations. Um, and I believe you've uh, done a concerto cycle and uh, one of few pianists in the world to have performed all 32 piano sonatas in a single day, um, which is quite a mountain to climb. So thank you so much, Stuart, for joining us. It's a real pleasure to have you here. So um, I am Erica Berman. I'm director of the IRA Affiliate Center for Beethoven Studies. And I'm delighted to present this winner's masterclass. So every year, our piano competition has a final featuring six high school aged pianists who each perform a complete Beethoven piano sonata. Our final took place yesterday and we have three winners, the first of whom is Enoch Lee, who is joining us um, from his home right now to play for Mr. Goodyear, Beethoven's Waldstein Sonata. So um, I'm gonna hand it over to you now and um, enjoy. Should I just play? Yeah, go for it.
Very good. I'm just going to go through um, various movements. I'm just going to start with you every movement, if that's okay. Um, for the first movement, um, I'm wondering whether or not, um, since it's, it's not like the other um, sonatas that have your, your usual lyrical theme, if there's a way for those repeated chords to just almost begin like it's out of nowhere, so there's not even a preparation like there's a way where you're already feeling those eight notes before you put your hands on the keyboard. So you're thinking to yourself, single um, moment as a revelation from the repeated notes that just come out of nowhere to the B flat that has almost nothing to do with the C major to this stark that comes out of nowhere to C minor then it's C major again and it's all and it's filled with all of these amazing surprises and it's almost as if um, the interpreter has to feel every single one and you know from even uh, color and if when you think about it this is probably the closest that we get to anything lyrical before everything uh, that slows down but it's like an entirely new hemisphere so what's more from the beginning I really feel those eighth notes just right before you begin so it's like oh. Yes, so um, when you hear, if you can really feel that held G before going back to, also appearing out of nowhere again, no preparation, it's like, you know what I mean? Once more, maybe from, Even quieter. Almost as if you're releasing okay. that G to. Dissonance to there, and, and it's still the dominant. Yeah, yeah, keep going, keep going.
second theme. Is there a way? So the um, everything should be released from that. I just feel like it's, it, it could shape more and it seems like, you know, maybe the only time where everything goes to the highest note of the phrase that that Don't accent like a real smooth. Almost, almost. how that could be just one phrase from that um you know for four bars and if this if the second chord could be just a, a little softer than the g sharp oh my my screen froze can you still hear me hello Hi. um you're oh, yeah. here i think we lost you know for a sec but i think i think you could oh okay it's no my can you hear me all right okay So instead of um, accentuating, I know it's a new high-end position, but if there's a way of, after, you know, you hear this, how are you going to connect to this chord so it's really a part of the phrase? You know what I'm saying? Try it once more. Yep, keep going, keep going. That was that wasn't as good. That wasn't as good. One, one more time. Same thing. So there's still that connection with with the four or four bars. Yeah. That's right. Okay. That's right. Keep going, and always with the, uh, with that uh, with that in your head in terms of the phrasing when you go to that. Um... I just need to stop you there. So what you were doing with, with that long phrasing. Then it, there is 
like a um, continuation, a development of that idea with the um, with the um, triplets. So um, it's like um, um, a little bit of um, a tennis match going from one, you know, the ball on one court to the other. So. And then both. So to create the suspense, create that suspense, but no accents. It's almost as if it's this, you know, it's, it's expanding into this long phrase until. And then finally. So it's like this build, 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 and it's and it's this you know this unending, unstoppable um, ride that goes. Yeah. So um, once more, that that was really excellent what you did there. Just right, right from there. to make that left hand very dominant and then even more and then it's like this tennis match again with, uh, it's switching back and forth and a Now coming full circle. Back to, you know, um, if, if you are, if you are going to do the repeat, it's like, you know, back to but it's just that hard earn going back to pianissimo again, where everything has to be almost embracing the entire universe from the, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, maybe from, from there. Keep going, keep going. lyrical I know it's it's don't give too much uh, don't um uh, don't fall back too quickly because we reach this part it's, it's almost uh, almost inhumane to just suddenly cool off and then cool off
to feel that. Twice the tempo. Twice the tempo. And then, um. So it's almost like, uh, it's it's that same um, suspense building and building and building. Is there a way, um, I, I don't know if, if you like this idea, but try it, maybe at least that, uh, if we could hit that and then that relation. So, you know, um, I try it. Um, it might be a little awkward at first, but try it. Stress this. F. B flat. B flat. B flat turning into um, A sharp. That resolution B. Semitone up. And then a fourth. Semitone up, semitone up. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, if we could feel that B, B flat, you don't have to, it, it, I'm exaggerating now, but if there's a way of, if you can feel that in your gut, we have time until we finally we get to B. B. And just a semitone up, so it's almost as if we're pushing this uh, immovable object, and then finally, whatever you want to do there, soften, but you know, really feel those um, those bass um, syncopations there. Once more from there. That was actually that was good, but once more, mm -hmm. really feel those pieces.
one more thing. Um, from the if we could hear that um, F sharp, uh, F. So, you know, even though you're going softer, if we could still hear that. You know what I mean? Keep going. I just have to stop you there. Excellent. Okay. I'm wondering. Um, uh, that C G C G. If we could add, maybe get uh, have more preferential treatment to what's happening in the um, left hand. You know what's going on here. Will will be heard, but I'm wondering if. So it's almost as if this, and we're hearing this, this uh, undercurrent somewhere, but very, very quiet, very quiet, and only here are this. Does that, you know, um, have importance? And it's just coming out of nowhere like a, uh, like a um, lightning strike. So have this, this rumble coming out of nowhere, you know, until the sky finally opens up. But we need, we need that, um, excuse me, but at the end of the seat kind of a thing. Maybe from here? Softer, even softer, even softer than what you did at the very beginning. Even softer than that. So um, like, no connection. Okay. If you are connecting, just do it in terms of the direction that you're going, not because we're still giving you much away. You know what I'm saying?
Remember what I was telling you about um, the lyrics or something? And remember the connections. Should I start from the... Start from maybe... those chords. Okay. The first time was the first time you did it was better. Especially on that one because now it's C, C natural. Leading up to so, um, okay. I'm sorry to interrupt, just a reminder that we need to wrap up maybe in a, in a minute or two. Okay, thanks, thank you. Yes. Okay. And especially now that we're as uh, C major, so then the emphasis on the um, if uh, a flat and then a natural. Don't, don't rush um, too much. You know, I know it's 16 notes, but really, uh, don't think of them as fast notes. Well, one more time and then we'll have to stop. Maybe from here.
have to stop there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, with great pleasure. Me too. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thanks. That was absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for that. So I'm uh, delighted to introduce our second performer, who is Justin Liu. Justin, if you could just unmute yourself and appear on the screen, and I will. Hello, pleasure. So Justin is going to perform uh, Beethoven's Sonata Opus 28. So over to you.
Good. I'm going to stop you there. Uh, let's see how much time we have. Okay, great. So what you are doing here. That kind of feeling, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, that kind of a dance swing going on. Can we keep that right from the very beginning? And you could uh, and hear that swing. What you're doing there is fantastic, but almost in this very rustic three, four. Can we hear it from the beginning? And um, for this, I like how you're stressing the um, the offbeats, the one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. But gonna be all part of the phrasing. Yum, da 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 da. da. So there is the emphasis, but not the punch. You know what I mean? It's, it's keeping in that swing, even though there are these offbeat syncopations that go on within that swing. Very good. One more time, one more time. I just heard a little bit of a punch, a little less of a punch. Then you almost, then you got it. It's just a little tiny thing, but I think it will. That E if could connect to that E sharp. And whatever the dynamic was before you hit that E sharp, connect. Try that. The whole, I um, I felt like you kind of went ahead, you, you know, just feel those two dotted half notes, and then um, it's you know it's coming from one idea and then going to the other, but almost like it's almost seamless. Um, it's up to you, but I'm wondering, like, if 
remember when I was uh, talking about the um, the Walsh time with those um, semitones then. <laughs> And again, it's like from one idea to the other idea, and it's seamless. So from and then, but it goes, but it's it's, it's um, borrowing from the rich, uh, from one past idea to a future idea. But part of that swing is, I think, how seamless the idea of uh, the ideas are. Maybe from uh... Um, if you go way too soon, you could calm down, but somehow get those notes heard, you know. If you're going to, you know, you could, you know, you know, soften the dynamics, but somehow keep, um, you know, have that as a priority. Don't let, don't let it drown. Yeah, uh, that part. If you're going to separate. If there's a way of, um, instead of punching it, yum, like lift it. Yum. So it's not, it, it, it sounds a little aggressive and it's almost like a room, 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 like a wave almost. Maybe a little, light, a little lighter, more, think of it as a lift as opposed to a boom, where, you know, we arrive, lift it. pick again so and then we're back to the lyricism yeah. what's more from was beautiful but i think in order to get there it should it should be early it sounds a little bit just too too angst you know that same kind of lift Same thing with like part of the phrasing, even though it's um, syncopated and you know it, indeed stress it, but a 
as part of the phrasing, you know what I mean? different rhythms if we could feel that smooth scale going down same thing for the beginning so yeah from from the development you're doing fantastic but keep it so stress that ya da da ya da da ya da da ya da da ya but you know um otherwise excellent but keep that ya da da ya da da ya da da ya So especially if you're if you're going to take time, I love what you're doing. I love the um, the idea of, but instead of um, preparing it with the down beat, prepare it with the second beat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's when that's when we finally hear the um, hands almost disjoined. Uh, you know, coming apart. So with the left hand, you have that. You're going to the C sharp. I wonder if you maybe do it with the same thing with the um, right hand. You know what I'm saying? Because you know it, it, it even makes it even more. Um, Ingenious of Beethoven from Sorry. You know what I mean? So it's almost as if the hands are not supporting each other. They're going in, they're totally independent. Maybe from
Don't punch. Don't punch. Swirl. Don't punch. You see what you what you did to that diminuendo was amazing. If you could have that amazing crescendo that has that same kind of um, direction as opposed to a punch, try that once. Maybe from. I'm wondering whether or not that's not as mysterious enough. So it's like you have that. So are we going back to? You know, Beethoven could have done it that way. And then, but instead, from in that quiet. Sorry. Almost like a full start. Where else are we going to go? Back to the beginning. If there's a way of almost creating that kind of humorous, okay, kind of a false start, but I'm here, I might as well keep going, kind of a feeling. So it's almost as if it's, all, it's, it's improvisatory, but it's like, okay, where are we going? All right, we might as well. You know what I mean? Is there a way of not even creating a writ? No writ. Even more. Save it for the fermata coming up. I think you're anticipating the um, the the um, fermata rest. Try try hard not to. Part of the phrasing, you know, um, stress it, but don't punch it. You know what I'm saying? Be part of that wave. It's almost flittering in a way, you know, part of the pastoral setting. Where... You know, don't stress it too much. No, no aggression. It's like a real part of that lift. You know what I mean?
Ooh, look what I told you about the connection. I still hear a punch. I'm still hearing a punch in that A sharp. Remember those semitones. Remember those semitones coming up. Sense. Could it be part of the um, crescendo? Ya -da 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 -ba -da -ba -da so these punches don't come out of nowhere. Once more, maybe from here. Once more from there. I'm hearing da 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 punch that punch that don't punch it da 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 pa da pa da stress it but don't punch it once more So once more um, from, and what I told you before, I'm not punching. Now a little bit of a punch, just a tiny, tiny bit, because now we're not hearing the ac accents at all. So just a tiny, tiny speck of punch, but just a speck. Thank you. 
about a little bit of a punch, but not much. Now you're not doing anything at all. Just a tiny, tiny speck. Now, now you have part of the phrasing. Now we get to add that extra kick. Good. Yep. Well, God, we're almost done. Uh, probably that... a another few minutes because we were running a little over. Oh, okay, great. So, um, can we uh, check out the second movement? Yeah, that's what we thought. Remember. Now we have this. Oh, have that connection. the punch of the G. If, 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 if anything, punch the A, not the G. Remember when I was telling you of where you're accenting, but it's part of the phrasing. Same thing with do -do 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 -do. I'm hearing almost a faint and then suddenly punch. Be like you know, it's like arriving at the destination now, right?
good, very good. I'm wondering if there's a way of um, instead of it sounds, which is which is very nice and humorous as long as we hear. So every here, instead of um, leave out the um, grace note. And then with a little, every long over here, get up, 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 It seems a little bit pointy. You know, you never seen a feather just slightly sway down to a puddle. Could it be that light? It's almost sticking from That kind of lightness from the um, from the left hand. Even um, start. Especially from like nothing happened, like this rude thing is not going to disrupt, you know what I mean? Sorry to stop you there. What you were doing was really beautiful. Uh, if there could be that same, because you're doing that same kind of from, if we could have that, stressing that jaw, second beat. I'm sorry to, to interrupt. We do need to look at the time. Was um, the time? Yeah. Oh. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. It's really good to hear. My pleasure. All right. Uh, let me introduce our final performer today. That's Yejin Song. Yejin, if you could just unmute yourself. Um, Yejin is going to perform uh, Opus 78. Great.
Second movement. Sonata is just filled with different characters happening all of a sudden from that very amazing It's, it's the perfect opening, uh, even though it's, it's like the opening has absolutely nothing to do with the first. But there needs to be an introduction. You just can't start with. It's not that interesting. Is there a way of that opening to be totally uh, foreign to anything that comes right after? So almost expand it to the point like that is just, you know, those um, four bars are that's the entire movement mm -hmm. and then it's something new Oh, don't prepare. Don't prepare. I see you preparing. 
<laughs> Just keep an eye on the formata. And it's almost as if it's almost as if you forgot what's happening next and then suddenly. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Don't prepare. Right. Very beautiful, but I'm wondering. The next idea is starts here. You know what I mean? So instead of like a subito piano. Yeah, but don't don't prepare. It's like it's like something totally different now. It's like from one idea to the next idea to the next idea. Maybe from. Uh, uh, from what you did over, the, did over there, is there a way, not doing it, but thinking that way? When you're playing those chords, remember you have that. It's just another uh, uh, version of the um, three chord thing, but just to make it completely different from. You know what I'm saying? Maybe from One more, one more thing. So, so the, now this is where the similarities of the ideas, you know, um, come to pass. So, what at the very beginning, very different character, even though it's in the same key. So. So it's the is that dominant to the uh, tonic, but uh, almost a different kind of um, not a preparation, but it's almost as if nothing happened. It's part of the same kind of character as. 
You know what I'm saying? So um, similarly to what you did with where you didn't prepare to this, don't prepare. You know what I mean? I think I think I do. So yeah, yeah. So it's it's almost as if it's um, uh, different choirs of the orchestra. You have the brass, and then suddenly you have the woodwinds that come out of nowhere. Brass. preparing again you're 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 not i shouldn't say prepare you're anticipating yeah i think that's... and then suddenly this comes out of nowhere you know what i'm saying yeah what, what do you so, think about um that transition to minor into this is is like is that also like anticipating the mind? well what will help you i think um, um i think if you have um it's, it's like a seamless transition so from the um chords that you have in the um right hand if they if you know at first they're accompanying but now with every single um quarter note there's more and more of importance until it gets to you know what i mean the lyricism has to come in I think with you know with the, with the um, major you had that now you have that darker I think you could um, you could stretch out but not too much stretch out that um, uh, 16th note so it doesn't sound like you know what I mean This was beautiful, but same thing. I'm, I'm exaggerating, but as long as we could hear that C sharp, and then so we hear the continuation of the in the left hand while the right hand once more for
Is there you know, for these um three chords? Ba da dum. What you're doing with the um different characters is very good, but just make uh just make it a part of the um phrasing. Ya da dum, bum, bum. Ya da da. Connect those three chords. You got. The you got the right. It's now reverse. So ya da dum, bum, bum, ya da dum, ya da dum, bum, bum, bum. You know what I mean? Just it just create more of that. Um, just make it clear. That's what that. That's what's going on. I'm wondering, um, um, uh, if we could still hear that. wondering um what with the um uh to transition to the development session we have if there is a way of maybe having the uh tricking the audience into thinking they're going to hear but instead just this shock almost this rude surprise which takes us perfectly into and i think you know this the, the secret of the you know how uh, the magnificence of that sonata is just how you know how random all of these ideas are but how they relate to one another so um, I th uh, what you were doing was absolutely beautiful, but I'm thinking it's like the ultimate tease. Mm -hmm. you know, if you could really milk that teasing and then, you know, just, you know, just hit the audience with a, you know, you know what finger I'm talking about. Almost, but but like every single time you have this, be insistent with the top C sharp. Uh, as in... And I'm wondering, this this may be very, very naughty, but I'm wondering. For every time you have those C sharps, 
make those chord, quarter notes um, even longer every single time. So. <laughs> So every C sharp, it feels like it's going to be more and more and more lyrical, and then suddenly wham, 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 wham. You know what I mean? Work on that, but see, okay. see what you think. You know, see if it works for you. So um, every time you know a little trivia every time i play this i always think of i always hear rue britannia every time i do and i don't know whether or not it's it's just me i'm i'm, I'm being very very strange it feels as if um if if, if this was a um a purposeful quote but it seems even more humorous to me every single time I hear it. It's just this thing that just comes out of nowhere and then he's trying to um, justify it by doing something with it. Very square, but very humorous. And then you have this yodeling. like you know beethoven that it's at, at his most rude <laughs> mm -hmm. then <laughs> dudley moore was this um um piano comedian who used to love doing a parody on Beethoven in which, you know, he had this 5-1-5-1 five, one, five, one incessantly and you never know whether or not the piece is going to end. And that was part of the joke. And I keep on hearing that in this movement. Mm -hmm. So we really have a lot more fun with it. Hearing, um, I'm hearing groups of four as opposed to groups of two. Um, it's, it's, I know it's very, very awkward, but try it. Ask you to do something very, very, uh, very stupid. <laughs> Try that. Just exactly what I'm doing. Right. Left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Even even with uh, with the soft thing, left right, left right, left right, left right. Yes, that's, that's the joke. And same thing with. Could you really stress the eighth, 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 eighth?
but I'm wondering. So if you have it's same thing with the um, first moment. Now this time. So if you can have like it's it's that brass fanfare again, and then. And I have um, another, um, I'm charging my um, computer, so that's why I'm going back and forth. So, you know, my battery's dying. So now you have the fanfare, all right, but instead of banging it, is there a way of lifting, like lift your wrist? Yeah. Everything is light, even though, um, you know, it's di difference of dynamics.
sing this. Everything was going very, very well, then it got serious again. <laughs> Yes, that yo -do 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 really milk that legato. Yes. Yes. Wait in the, for that fermata. Don't prepare, don't anticipate for the next one. You know, one very obnoxious, like if you were really showing off and that, you know, and you were at a bar, what would it sound like? What would that run sound like? Just have fun with it. And then pop, 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 for the, um, yep. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much Stuart, for such a wonderful masterclass. Um, and, uh, thank you of, of course to our three wonderful performers as well. Thank um, you three very, very much. I'm just moving my computer around. I hope I, I hope people are not getting dizzy. I, I'm now trying to situate where the plugs are, so I'm now charging my um, computer as I'm talking. <laughs> that's wonderful. You know, I'm never going to unhear um, "Rule Britannia" in that uh, second movement now. So that's that's wonderful. <laughs> um, do you have a few moments to to hang around, Stuart, and maybe yeah. just just have a chat to us because we have, of course, our three performers today, but also. Our three other finalists who performed wonderful sonatas yesterday, Curtis Lee, who played the Waldstein as well, Ziyu Zheng performed Opus 31 number three, and Nancy Zheng performed Opus 81A. And with these six wonderful pianists, obviously have very bright futures in front of them. Um, and it'll be really nice to hear from you about you and Beethoven. Because um, obviously, you you know, it, this is music is in your blood. It's very clear that this is music that you've lived with. Um, is that... Was there a revelation for you in Beethoven, or is this something that is a kind of gradual? Well, it just hit me. Um, I was around three or four when I when I first heard. You know, I, I was into box sets. I was into um, these two LP sets. Um, I got into music just through, you know just rummaging through my uh, dad's collection, and he had Led Zeppelin, he had Cat Stevens, all of these rock and roll, rhythm and blues and pop albums and he also had boxes of um, symphonies beethoven symphonies and tchaikovsky symphonies and i was listening to them and that was my first revelation that you know that i wanted to be in classical because i thought it was even cooler than any of the rock and roll music i was listening to precisely because every track i didn't know they were called movements yet but every track was longer than four minutes sometimes it was 20 sometimes it was 24 and I felt like, you know, there were no limits to what feelings were expressed. And, you know, and every interpretation was different. So I thought it was a freer music. 
even a more dangerous music and a wilder music. And I was also listening to, uh, I was looking at MTV and seeing music videos of, um, you know, Michael Jackson, Sting, and um, these stadium concerts where the crowd would absolutely go wild for rock and roll. And I think to myself, well, if they're going wild for rock and roll, I can't even imagine how they'll go for Beethoven. <laughs> wow. Was there any particular Beethoven piece that grabbed you? Symphonies, piano? The first um, um, piece that really hit me was the um, fourth movement of the Ninth Symphony, that dissonant um, roar that just hits. In, and that was that was the first thing that started side two of this Beethoven's Greatest Hits album I had. And then, you know, that was the, that, that was the, that was the uh, moment for me where I'm thinking to myself, well, I really I want to get to know a little bit more of that composer. Uh, my dad also had an LP of Vladimir Ashkenazi doing um, Chopin's Four Ballads, and that was the first time hearing piano music. And I thought, wow, I really love the sound of that instrument. And um, I like this performer. So I, I begged my mom to go to the record store. And, you know, I was going through and, you know, during those days, the classical section was the largest section. So I, I, I was in LP heaven, just going and checking out all of these different pieces. And I saw Vladimir Ashkenazi, so excited. And I saw this gold box set of 13 LPs, which happened to be the Beethoven Complete Sonatas. And that was my introduction to those pieces. So went home and just devoured those um, vinyl records from, you know, sun up to sun down. By the time I knew it, I went through the whole thing. And for the longest time, I always thought of the 32 as one complete set. And I was hearing it in chronological order. And I saw so many relationships already with the, um, the previous sonata to the Apostonata, the previous sonata to the Wallstein and et cetera, and so forth. And then that was, it was an important day for me because that's when I, when I knew I wanted to be a classical pianist and devote my life to piano music. Wow. And then moving from a listener to a performer, what kind of new things do you discover about Beethoven from being inside these sonatas? I just feel like um, more and more, it's like Beethoven is just pushing the envelope every single time and almost wanting to outdo what he did before. After the Wallstein, he had to um, outdo, uh, outdo himself with a 10 minute work, which I think is one of the most, you know, like uh, it, it could be a 20th century uh, piece the Opus 54, the uh, F major. And um, it's, it's like he was throwing ideas um, left and right, and he was never repeating himself. You saw references here and there, but it's um, it's like, you know, he took one idea, he took once an idea and then just expanded it to um, as, as far as it could go. So when it finally got to Opus 111, you're into um, territory where you're hearing boogie woogie for the first time. Like, um... And then um, you have it. You know, you're hearing all of these strange effects coming there and it's a far cry from what he did from the very very beginning and then you know I kind of only have imagined what would have happened if he lived a little, little longer how much more adventurous Beethoven would have been he just kept on um, getting more and more revolutionary yeah and even if he died earlier we would still have incredible music from him. We still have um, the Opus 7 Sonata which is incredible. The Pathétique already just... Or even yeah. the, the Sorry. No, no, go on. No, I was just going to ask if Yejin, Justin or Enoch had any questions for Stuart if there's anything you wanted to um, ask maybe about his career or his, his life with Beethoven. Uh, do you have a favorite Beethoven sonata? Oh, and it's not because it's the last one, but Opus, Opus 111 mm. it always hits me. But it, it's it's so hard. That's why it was it, it was very difficult for me to pick a Beethoven sonata like a regular human being, you know, just program a Beethoven sonata for a recital program. Because I was so warped with the idea, it was just one complete set. I felt like if I played one sonata, I was taking a bleeding chunk. 
which is, which is ridiculous, but I was in that mindset. And then finally, um, you know, I thought, you know what, and, and um, I'll just um, exercise the demon and just do it how I first heard it. And that's how the Sonatathon came to be and play, uh, playing the Sonatathon in one day somehow, you know, made me relive, you know, that first moment when I heard it at age four. And then I think to myself, well, okay, I could do this. I could pick one sonata and then, you know, just center a program around that. But it's like, you know, I needed to go through that baptism of fire in order to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, 111 does it for me. Wait, what about like a favorite Beethoven concerto? Oh, well, I just did the fourth concerto last night and mm. uh, it's, it's so miraculous. But the fifth is is rock and roll incarnate. Number two is you know like a like a like a bad boy playing piano in a salon. You have number one, which you know which gets into um, stadium territory. But of course he uh, uh, but he, uh, of course he he lets himself out of the bag by this this very jovial beer dance. And I feel like I, I recorded all of the um, Beethoven concerti and. Um, I was going through um, all of the rondos and nothing seemed right to me until, you know, there was a producer who said, you know, all of these very much sound like beer songs. And, it, and it's the same kind of swinging. So when you have um, like the Emperor Concerto. <laughs> he had this idea of, you know, people in the tavern going, yeah, you know, just swinging along with this three quarter time thing. I'm thinking, well, that's an interpretation. Let's let's play with that, and uh, that that's how we came up with you know how I came up with that interpretation for um, the album. But yeah, favorite piano concerto. It's 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 a it's a it's a tie between four and five. Mm -hmm. What's yours? Uh, I think four for me. <laughs> I haven't played it, but maybe soon. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Can I ask about your um, experience playing last night? Um, you had an audience present. I mean, that that's kind of a memory from the past and, and this this year that we've been through. What was that like? The real, um, you know, hearing applause again, you know, hearing, you know, just getting that vibe from the audience. It was so different. I was doing a lot of virtual concerts, of course, and um, I just felt like, you know, no matter what, you know, um, whether or not it was the atmosphere was my audience or the camera people, you know, um, you know, I had to, you know, I, I felt like I needed to play for someone and communicate for someone and whatever the vibe I got, that's how I got my interpretation with the, um, you know, going back to the crowd and, and the applause and playing for people again, it just, I missed that energy. So it felt, it really felt fantastic. Jess and Enoch, is there anything you'd like to ask? Oh, yeah. Um, so I think you talked about it, how you played um, all 32 sonatas in one day. Like, I was really shocked by that because, like, how did you manage to, like, play so much repertoire all in one day? Yeah. How? Or I guess. Mm. Um, well, it, it's, um, it's a six-month preparation. So I'm training like an athlete, working out, exercising, and, you know, the diet completely changes. And um, I'm on keto for the whole time, no alcohol, uh, no breads, no soba, no sugar, very, very, very strict diet. And um, it's like every, every day I'm just pushing myself and just um, building as much stamina. So physically I can, um, 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 I can, I can do this. And then um, I also shock the finger muscles. So, um, you know, I am playing through all of the 32 sonatas and I have to shock the finger muscles. All right. Opus 53, go, boom. Opus 111, go. Opus 78, go. So it's almost as if, you know, there's absolutely no time to think. And so, um, you know, it's building up muscle memories in, in the fingers. So if my brain is somehow, for whatever reason, starting to wander, my fingers, you know, they, they have my back, so to speak. And then, um, yeah. And then, and, then, and then the diet just goes, you know, goes out the window. I'm having a bottle of beer after... Um, after after the end of 111. <laughs> um, so I had one question and besides Beethoven, what other composers do you really like? Oh gosh, that's a tough one. I, I like all composers. I perform, I, I, I love performing Rachmaninoff, Ravel, Chopin, uh, Brahms. Brahms was a late love for me. I, I um, grew up listening to, uh, to Brahms, but I didn't start to love 
Brahms until very recently. Um, I was playing um, both both of the concerti. And, you know, I was looking at his biography and nothing really seemed to, in, you know, inspire more adoration until um, I read so, uh, that he loved going to this diner called the Red Hedgehog. At every lunch, he would always go and get the same thing, you know, coffee and brandy and rice palaf. And um, he would have that every day, midday. And I'm thinking to myself, all right, now I, now I unlocked the, um, the secret. I felt, you know, to me, Brahms was country in an urban environment. And to me, that was the secret to a lot of his stuff. There was this very gypsy element in all of his music. And somehow that, that got me very, very close to, you know, to my, you know, to personal understanding of, of that. So I like playing Brahms now. But Prokofiev, I enjoy. Bartok, I enjoy. I also write my own music. So I'm, I'm incorporating some of my, my music to... Um, um, piano recitals. I, I really like it all. Um, one more question. Do you listen to like jazz music and stuff? All the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't well, know who would be my f favorite jazz pianist. I love Thelonious Monk. Just, he had just a different way, uh, a, a different pianism altogether that was uniquely his. And R. Tatum. Um, Herbie Hancock, um, yeah, I, I, I listen a lot to jazz. Okay, thank you. Yeah. It was great to hear about your training regime and your, uh, your strict Beethoven diet. Um, do you have any advice for our young pianists who are here today who are sort of at the start of their journey with the piano? Any advice for, for starting a career or just beginning, you know? life as a pianist and discovering all of this repertoire? Read a lot about past pianists. Devour biography after biography. Um, memorize quotes from a pianist who you absolutely admire. Take them into your heart and um, let that be your guide. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Um, this has been an absolute pleasure. Um, thank you for being our master teacher this year. I hope that in the future we can have you here in person in San Jose. I love that. I love that very much. And yes. Um, thank you very much for um, having me. It's, it's been a great pleasure. Wonderful. Well, thanks again to all of our performers. Um, it's been a really fantastic standard this year. I've learned so much from this masterclass as well, uh, and I'm sure everyone else did who was listening today. So thank you everyone very much for being here. Thank you, Stuart, for joining us. And um, I hope to see you all again um, at some point in person, hopefully, and in, in, we can be in the same room together. That would be absolutely marvelous. <laughs> so take care, everyone. Thank you again for joining us. Take care. <laughs>